Good morning, everyone. Uh, just before I start, I would like us to do a little bit of exercise since the room is kind of chilly. So I'm going to teach you a small song that we normally perform as Operation Triple Zero. When I say Operation Triple Zero, you say, I am a hero. Operation Triple Zero. Operation Triple Zero. So you'll pardon me, I'll rap a little bit in Swahili, but I hope you'll get the few words. So OTZ uh, champions say, uh, viral load, watch your iwe down, get up, rise up, CD4, zero, rise up when he champ, hero number, tunataka kunywa dawa tu, penda life yako, ona doki manzejo, hini life yako, hini confession, zero infection, to me chill manzejo, no temptation, OTZ your form, baby boo. I hope, <laughs> thank you. I hope uh, you have gotten some of the few words. Basically, we're just saying uh, for you to love your life, go to the hospital, take your treatment, your viral load is supposed to be zero, your CD4 is supposed to be up, and when you do all this, your life is going to be perfect and healthy. So today here, uh, I'm Damaris Nyamwea, uh, president and uh, co-founder of Operation Triple Zero, an adolescent and youth initiative in Kenya. And uh, I'm going to talk uh, about stigma and discrimination in the community perspective, or I'll say using my own life experience. And uh, I prepared a few slides, basically just to explain what stigma and discrimination is. And uh, stigma is a powerful social process of uh, devaluing people or groups based on uh, real or perceived differences, such as gender, age, sexual orientation, behavior, or ethnicity, and in other cases also in terms of health. Discrimination is the unfair or unjust treatment of an individual based on the social identified status. Uh, stigma and discrimination are a big barrier to effective and equitable health care. They keep individuals from seeking out services that can improve their health or in some cases save their life. Yet, stigma and discrimination remain seri uh, a seriously neglected issue because we as human beings at times tend to be ignorant when it comes to certain matters. And uh, the the, the, number, the number one contributor to stigma and discrimination is lack of knowledge. That I will say, and I hope most of you will also agree with me, what people perceive even before they get to know about it. Like I will say, you'll also see it in my next slide, I did a small question and answer in a, an activity in, back in Kenya, and I asked the people standing in front of me, what is the first thing they think of when I mention the word HIV and AIDS? currently in the room, what is the first thing you think of when we mention HIV and AIDS? And the answers I got were quite big, as you could see also. Uh, some of them told me death is the first thing they think of. Some weak, some told me TB, some told me ARVs. Uh, also some mentioned having no future after the positive diagnosis. Some also mentioned there's no relationship. People won't love you for who you are. You are not able to get a boyfriend or a girlfriend, so you'll remain single. Uh, some also mentioned neglect from family and friends uh, due to their positive status. Now people won't, will, wouldn't want to uh, have any social interaction or any t form of interaction with them. And this really shocked me. But. I would say it's also due to the perspective that we as human beings, the perspective uh, that we have when it comes to HIV and not only HIV, but other diseases out there. We have mentioned even TB, diabetes or any other thing. And allow me to give you a short story about my life when I was growing up. I am born HIV positive and in a family of three the last one, and unfortunately, the only one who's infected with the virus. But I will say it's a really good, perfect story. And uh, I remember back when I was in uh, junior school, I will say lower classes, and we had this science teacher who was talking about HIV, because now we have the curriculum for HIV in our syllabus. And uh, the first picture he showed us about a person who's infected with HIV was a picture of someone who was very weak, very thin and really didn't look that good. 
And I had not known about my status then. Then later on is when, a few months later is when I got to know about my status. And the first thing that I remember the counselor asking me is, how do you feel knowing that you're HIV positive? And the first picture that came to my mind was the picture that our teacher had shown us. And I told her, I think I'm not going to make it in life. I'm just going to die. Because that was the picture that had been put to my mind. Our forefathers back then, it is very unfortunate that uh, what HIV is termed as a taboo in some communities back in Kenya. And uh, once you were diagnosed uh, with the virus, people put you aside. They thought that you will not have any future. In other communities, people started digging your grave for you, not knowing that maybe you will see another year, not knowing that maybe you will come to see 2020. And, uh, it was unfortunate that even my own parents were not courageous enough to enroll me into care or enroll themselves into care when they knew that I was born HIV positive, but I don't blame them. That was due to the current situation that was happening in the community. My own siblings, after getting to know that I was HIV positive, cried, teared up, because to them, they didn't think I would make it to be this beautiful lady standing in front of you today. Thank you. But I will say I have lived to show them that when you're HIV positive, it doesn't mean that it is a death sentence for you. When you are diagnosed to be HIV positive, it doesn't mean there's a future beyond your life. Sorry. HIV and AIDS stigma was so high that even my own family members didn't believe that I will make it to be here today. But with all that, it didn't stop me from being this wonderful person that I am here today. And uh, stigma and discrimination is a big issue to tackle. That I will clearly uh, say. And I, I know that it is not just an issue that we have to deal with alone. This is an issue that we need to sit down as a group and really tackle it. But I would also like to say that as an individual, as a person who's diagnosed with HIV, I am supposed to tackle it first. Because if I want the community to accept me with my HIV status, I also need to have accepted myself. I need to own up and say that, hey, I'm living HIV positive, so that the community will also accept me. There is no point in me keeping myself down and all that and expect an opposite result from the community. Trust me, I'm not advocating for you to live here and go tell people about your status. No, that's not what I've come here to say. I'm just trying to show you the positive outcome in you accepting your status first so that the community will also accept you. I fought my battle and with the help of Operation Triple Zero, an adolescent and youth initiative geared towards viral suppression and owning to your own treatment and health. I am courageous enough to stand in front of you today, a hero and a champion of my own health. The president and founder of this wonderful initiative back in Kenya, a true hero and a true champion of my health. Thank you. <laughs>